All right, how to get the home office deduction for your S corporation. Four things we gotta know. Number one is the accountable plan. Number two is how to calculate the amount of the deduction. Three is how to actually get that write off for your taxes. And then number four is some additional information I think is very valuable if you're gonna write off your home office for your S corporation. Let's go. All right, so first and foremost, in order to get a home office deduction for your S corp, you will need what we call an accountable plan. And what exactly this is, is essentially just a written document that states that the company can reimburse the employee for expenses. One of those expenses being your home office. As an S Corp owner, you are also supposed to be an employee of the business. So that's why we have this accountable plan to reimburse you as the employee from the business. If you don't know how this works, check out my S Corp for dummy video. All right, so this is, is an example of the accountable plan um, available online. I'll put it in the link in the description. You know, if you want to use this yourself, you know, make tweaks as you need. But essentially, again, it just puts it in writing that, you know, we we are, as a company, able to reimburse employees for business expenses, one of those being your home office. All right, in a nutshell, how the home office deduction works, we take the percentage of your home that you use for business, the office, multiply that by all your living expenses, and that's your deduction. So the way it works is we take the square footage of the home office, over the square footage of your home, and that gives us that percentage. Then we multiply the percentage, let's say for easy purposes, rent, utilities, and maybe renter's insurance, and that's what your home office deduction is. All that info is based on the IRIS form 8829, which is what you can see here, and obviously it's a government form and not very user friendly. So I'm gonna show you how this works on a spreadsheet. All right, so to go over the home office deduction on our lovely spreadsheet here. Like I said previously, we start with the square footage of the office itself, the square footage of the home, and that gives us a percentage. We then multiply this percentage by your expenses. Now, in this case, we're doing if we were to rent, okay? So we get our like our monthly rent here, uh, monthly insurance. I just took like $200 divided by 12 months. That's what I did. Just an example here, okay? Um, and then our rough utility bills that we're paying on a monthly basis, okay? That gives us our monthly expenses for the home. Now, of that $4,000, we multiply it by the 11% because that's how much of the house we use for business, and that would be our home office deduction in this example. All right, so the home office deduction is a lot more straightforward if you rent the home versus if you own the home, but if you own the home, we can still get it, and this is how we do it. We start off with the, again, square footage of the home and square footage of the office itself that you're using exclusively for business, right? And that gives us the percentage of the home we use for business, very important there. Um, and then we have to calculate depreciation, which I'm going to go over in a second. Mortgage interest is a little difficult itself too. Now, we know when we make mortgage payments, some of the payment goes to principal. Another part of it goes to interest. We need to take a look at what they call the amortization schedule of the loan to find out how much of that payment is going to interest versus to the principal. Now, we calculate the amount for interest, and that's what we're going to get here on our spreadsheet. Property tax is a lot more straightforward. You get those on like a, you pay those generally in a semi-annual basis. So whatever that is, you know, divide that by six, and that would be your monthly expense for property tax. Insurance, very straightforward. It's a annual premium generally that you're paying, and you get that amount and divide it by 12, and there's your uh monthly expense for insurance. Utilities, right? You just add up all utilities. This is all utilities, right? We're thinking water, electricity, trash, gas, uh, sewage, whatever else, utilities you're paying, internet, right? That's all going into this calculation here. Now, figuring the depreciation. What is depreciation to start with? It is essentially the principal amount on your mortgage payment. How, like how much you actually paid for the house itself. We can depreciate the building 
uh, expense on our home office. And the way it works, okay, is we come down here, we get the purchase price of your house, we then find out how much of that is attributable to land, okay? We can generally find this out on property tax statements to get that percentage, okay? They, they will, the assessor there will, will put that on, on the bill, okay? And then we find out how much is attributable to the building. Now, the building itself is what we get to depreciate. You do that that amount, in this case, 500000 The depreciation years for the IRS for a home office is 39 years, so that five hundred. Divided by the 39, that would be our annual, right, depreciation. And then we get the monthly. That would be our monthly. Okay, so that number you'll see up here. We then total all of our living expenses for the house, right? Total that up here, that 39, sorry, with all those, right? 39, multiply it by the 11%, and that would be our monthly home office deduction. All right, so now we know how to calculate the home office deduction itself. The next thing is how do we actually get this write-off? It's as simple as this, okay? Number one, we either cut a check or just transfer the money over to your personal account in either a monthly or quarterly basis. Now, those transfers or the check has to have like in the description or memo home office deduction. These have to be separate from your owner's distributions, okay? Because then when we go to do bookkeeping, those transactions for home office expense need to get categorized as such, as a home office expense, versus which would be different than your owner's distribution. Then when we run the profit or loss, we'll see that as an expense on your P&L, and then we'll use the P&L on your tax return, and voila, we get the deduction. All right, so some additional things we gotta know when doing a home office deduction with the S-Corp. Number one is you need to keep records, right? Utilities, your mortgage payments, property taxes, rent payments, leases, uh, we need to keep those records just in case this ever comes back so we can substantiate our home office deduction. Number two is reimbursements. Now, what we can do is we can estimate, like, let's say our utility expense on a monthly basis. But if we overestimate that and let's say after couple months we go in and, and audit that and we overpaid ourselves. you will need to reimburse the company what you've been paid because we actually need to make sure that we're paying a correct amount to yourself. Now the safe harbor rule which we can see on the accountable plan here is is 120 days. So essentially just under half the year you got to go back in and see you know did we pay out the correct amount? Something else you got to know is if you're a homeowner and you are taking the home office deduction, we want to make sure that you're not double dipping on these deductions. And what I mean is, is we'll get right a portion of your home for the home office deduction on your S Corp tax return as again, as a deduction. We also get a deduction for mortgage interest and property taxes on your personal return on the Schedule A. So we want to make sure that we're only getting the fraction that is left over after the home office deduction. So if we look back at our spreadsheet here, right, we want to take the difference of the, let's say, property taxes. Let's say we pay, you know, 9000 divided by 12 is that 750 What's left over as a deduction on your, what we call Schedule A, your itemized deduction. And the same goes with the mortgage interest. Essentially, we're taking 11% with the business, we take 89% with the Schedule A itemized deduction. You don't wanna double dip on these deductions. Another massive benefit you get with the home office deduction is mileage, business mileage. Anytime you leave the house for business purposes, the clock starts or that odometer essentially starts for your business mileage because your business is at the house, right? So anytime you leave the house to go do business, those are considered business miles versus if we have an office, if we're going from the home to the office, that would be considered commuting, not business miles. Now, one thing I get a lot is when people say that they use 
a part of their living room as their home office. So they want to take the whole living room as the square footage for the home office. Now, we don't do that because it, the IRS says it has to be exclusively used for business. So we can't take, like, let's say the couch or the TV, right, as part of your home office because that's not what we're using for business. What we would do in a situation like that is we would just take your desk, maybe a little sum for your chair. Um, let's say in, in my case, I have a printer over here, a little coffee maker, my my trash can, and let's say my, my water um, in the back over there. That's That space is what I would use for the home office, not the full living room. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope the video was helpful if it was. Please help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Hit that like button. Share this to anyone that you think this would be helpful for. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much.